Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, depending on where you're joining us from um, the world. Uh, my name is Lynette Owens, and I'm the founder and global director of Trend Micro's Internet Safety for Kids and Families program. I'd like to welcome everybody to our 17th um, session, webinar session. And um, this series of webinars that we've been hosting since last April is something we decided to do as a result of our inability to be with communities around the world doing the work of helping young people, people who are raising them and people who are teaching them to be great digital citizens. So we are really grateful despite the pandemic that technology has enabled us to continue that work we're also very, very grateful for everyone who has been able to support us specifically for this series. I'd like to thank and introduce first our interpreters today, our uh, sign language interpreters today, Julia Barnes and Krista Lambert from the Learning Center for the Deaf. And then I'd like to welcome our esteemed panelists, um, Aliyah Ward, Tyler Dietrich and Richard Santoyo, uh, who are all currently um, studying at Cal State Los Angeles um, and have a keen interest in the area of media. And I think they're gonna bring a really great perspective to our discussion today about representation. Representation online, representation in all forms of media and what that means and why it matters. So welcome, uh, Aaliyah, Tyler, and Richard. Hello. 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 Thanks so much for being here. Um, I'd like to start um, and ask each of you to just say a little bit about yourselves, what you're interested, what you're studying right now, and why the issue of representation matters to you. So let's start with you, Tyler. Oh, uh, well, I'm Tyler Dietrich. As you guys heard from Lynette, I am a student at Cal State LA. I'm in the television and film department with Leah and Richard. And um, I believe personally that representation is something that's been lacked and prior from, from when I was born and is still something that we lack to this day. And I think that it needs to be in the forefront and something that we all need to take the initiative on to have people's voices be heard. And yeah, that's, that's, that's how I feel. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, Aaliyah. Uh, hi, I'm Aaliyah. I'm a fourth year film student uh, like with Richard and Tyler in the Cal State LA Television and Film Department. I'm currently an intern with uh, Media Done Responsively and I have an emphasis on production and I believe that representation is important because not only does it affect the way that we see others, but it also affects the way that we see ourselves. So that can have a very big impact on anyone's life, every single individual. So it's really important to have representation in the media so that it, we can educate everyone. Thank you so much. And, uh, and Richard. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Santoyo. Uh, this is my third year at Castle Delay, my last year, and also to uh, in film with Tyler and Leah. Uh, current, like I said, I'm currently my last year in for film and specifically production. I do want to become a director in the future. Um, the only thing right now I'm working on production right now is I'm working on a short film for a class of mine, and also to actually working with uh, central casting for background acting. Um, the reason. And also, too, the reason why I think uh, representation in media is important is to let people know what's going on and why different rep representations in media, specifically, what's going on. And we don't really know, not a lot of people know what's going on, because I know I told my friends, but I showed my friends a couple things of what's going on, and they don't even see it. So that's why it's important to me. And also, too, Leah took my, what I was going to say, too, exactly. So that's actually exact same thing. Oh, fantastic. And, and I think it's a really, um, I think it, there's a lot of education with regard to, you know, um, 
even understanding where are we failing? Where in media are we failing um, to represent or where are we misrepresenting or where are we not representing um, certain groups of people and, and the damage that can do? So can I, I, I'm <clears throat> gonna ask each of you um, to get a little personal on this if you don't mind, um, but can you share a time when the impact of that, whether it was on social media or television or movies, um, where, where the group you identify with most was re misrepresented or wasn't represented and how that personally impacted you. And um, any of you can start actually, whoever uh, likes to go. I don't, I don't mind, I'll start out. Um, well, it was, it's a good question. And uh, thinking about it, I was one of those kids, I'm sure like others that grew up watching Saturday cartoons, you know, waking up, you know, you have your, bugging your parents, getting up, go getting breakfast, cereal, whatever it is, and sitting down in front of the TV and watching cartoons. I think my generation was like probably the last era of that because now kids are just on the tablet. But uh, no, I would say that that was probably the first time where I kind of started to have a conscious of understanding that there wasn't too many like superheroes that I watched on like in general that looked like me you know the first one I could remember was like Static Shock but that was that wasn't even like a, a Saturday morning cartoon it was like something they threw on late but I personally didn't see too many superheroes of any kind of any sort that that I figured looked like me but uh I would say it didn't it didn't take my interest away from cartoons but I later on I wouldn't say when I was that young I was like why isn't anyone look but as you get older and you start to realize and you go back and you talk things over with your friends and like oh you watch that I watch that too and you have these conversations you all you start to realize that there's a lack of representation if there is any representation for uh for African Americans in cartoons yeah thank you for sharing that um <laughs> that's and that's an early moment of realization because um, yeah, I, I mean, I think about my own personal experience. I don't think I, I don't think I was that young actually, but, um, and I watched cartoons. I did <laughs> with the cereal. That's so bad for you, by the way, <laughs> I would not eat now. Um, Richard or Aaliyah? Okay. I can go. Um, mine's kind of like, eh, it's not. So I would say like mine is daily. It's something that I deal with daily. Like as a black woman, I would say I've definitely seen mostly negative uh, representation in the media growing up. I think as time goes on, we, the media and like film and all those things are getting better. But I, I have personally growing up, I've seen mostly negative. So for me, um, I think one of the biggest like stereotypes I see in media is like, oh, black women always wear weave all the time and for me as a woman who has never had a weave and who wears only her natural hair I constantly every single day have people coming up to me like is that your real hair well are you sure can I touch your hair or maybe not even asking just reaching to touch my hair and I know maybe there's a lot of controversy around that and I just want to clarify from my perspective that that it, for me, it feels invasive. And even to be asked like, is that your real hair? To be questioned if that's the truth as if my first answer was not good enough in some way. It's like, it's kind of like, maybe some people don't think about just how much media has had an effect on that. And it affects, like I said earlier, how people see me, how they approach me, how they talk to me, how they interact. So I'll say, yeah, it's something that affects me daily. Right. Uh, invasive is a, that's a mild word, <laughs> Aaliyah. I could think of many other <laughs> words I would use to describe that. I mean, that's, that's just crossing a, a, a space and a line, especially if it's someone you don't even know very well. Um, well, thank you for, for sharing that. And, and Richard? With me, I honestly didn't, I was, <laughs> I was the smartest kid when I was little. Um, I actually didn't start learning to like this whole misinterpretation until I got to my first year of college. 
at Real Hondo, um, I started noticing some cartoons being a little more for because I'm Mexican American, a little more how Mexicans are are like supposed to be drunk in TV or bad guys usually. And when I saw that, I was a little shocked, and it, it kind of it hit me. I'm like, why? Like, why is this happening? And then same thing with Tyler's issue too. I, same thing. Like, I never seen a Mexican superhero. Only like L- Lucha Libre or Lucha Dolores that become a superhero. I'm like, okay, but that's kind of like stereotype at the same time for me. And eventually, the finally there was one that pointed out but they're still kind of a little bit stereotyping that person that that superhero is blue beetle from dc and uh with his family it was mexican family i forgot where they live there was not the best area and of course for for me and also to african americans they, they kind of do that in some of these they make us live in a worst home ever we're not rich like um other others of color too like of course uh white americans they they get the rich part and we get the the low life part like that shouldn't be happening that kind of when i saw that that kind of hit me hit me home a little bit um and then there was one film that hit hit a home run and i think tyler can say this too it was it was uh called latinos beyond real and it showed so much how cartoons movies depict people of color mexican americans asian americans and how they represented so much stereotyping and that hurts a lot and also too sometimes social media is another big issue that happens to us as well like we're supposed to wear this mariachi uniform or certain uniforms that represents us and yet we're just average people as well um and one other thing two that hits is um sorry, sorry I kind of want to cry a little bit because <laughs> it does it, it does hit it hits hard um there was one film I saw and it was kind of like I forgot what it was there's so many films guys I, I can't even remember all of them there was one film and they called the person a wet bag I was like what why why is this oh it was so ugly and just I guess the word you can say that and then when working too oh I think we lost Tyler a little bit here um I'm here let's say oh you're, you're oh right. not Tyler sorry Richard I, thought, I was looking at took looking at Tyler yeah sorry my connection um uh, at work too sometimes people believe I speak only Spanish and I don't and I'll get people, oh, you're Mexican, aren't you? I'm like, yeah, but I don't speak Spanish. Well, Mexicans only speak Spanish. I'm like, no, not really. It doesn't happen. But it's just because of this whole social media, movies, shows, cartoons, depicts certain people. And so that's that's where it hurts the most. Well, um, gosh, I was almost getting <laughs> emotional with you. Thank you so much, all of you, for, for sharing this. I think people don't understand, but, and we need to elevate these conversations in regular everyday life at our in our homes and with our children and our relatives and friends. Um, so it means a lot to us that you're sharing everything that you have now, so thank you. Um, you, you bring up an interesting point, Richard, which is, kind of the crux of our discussion today, and that's specifically around the role of social media and whether or not it is making things worse. Is it perpetuating some of these stereotypes which then turn into people's biases, which then turn into very real harms of from someone reaching out to Aaliyah's hair? Um, for example. So first, I'd like to hear from each of you, what social media platforms do you actually use? Should I go first? Yeah, I mean, I'll go yeah. first. I I would say I have about everything. I have a, a Facebook, a Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, but the one that I'm on the most is probably Twitter, just because it's almost 
Well, I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard now, it's almost like the newspaper for us. You know, I'll wake up and read the BBC and NPR on there and, and ABC7 and KTLA. And I have all my Boston, my Boston, you know, news, you know, I have the Globe, I have all those, you know, that I, I you know, stay on top of just to make sure that I'm on top of my current events going on in the world. So I'm not living under a rock. But uh, I would say Twitter is different. It's a platform that's definitely you know, we've all been here for it, for to see its fruition and how it's grown. But um, I definitely have some positive and negative things to say. I mean, my mom would say, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. But, <laughs> but I guess, I mean, right now I'll say like Twitter, my biggest problem is that you have like this nowadays, these influencers or these people that have this, this almost like, it's, it's like, I don't want to call it idiotic image, but it's like a delusional image that people are trying to reach. And um, I think you just have to be headstrong and you have to have your, your, your everything on, you know, on, on top of each other. You have to, you know, be level headed. And I think nowadays also with the social media and the internet, a lot of people just see something right away and they believe it. You know, even if that was back from when our parents were just sitting down watching the news and then you just believe what the news is telling you. It's like, you're just set to be like, okay, this is what it is. And that's what I'm going to have to believe. And that's what the world is telling us. Like, which isn't the case most of the time. There's always a backstory and a, something else that led to this. There's a cause and effect. And, you know, it's, you can't just, you have to do your, you have to do your research. Just like me, Aaliyah and Richard are in right. school. We do our research for our things. People have to do their research and get on top of things. And I think a lot of people just go with their first, their first thing they see, the first mention, the yeah. first, like, you know, right. and that's my biggest issue, right? Because now you have people with this blue check mark who mm -hmm. are supposed to be superior yeah. to everybody else. And they are like, they have this, like, they, and I, I'm not saying that, like, I don't want to, like, I don't, like, you know, people be like, oh, you're a hater, you're a hater. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> hey, you know, they, I don't care. Like, I, there's people out there that are, worthy enough with or without a check mark everyone is worthy enough excuse me to speak their opinion whether it's good or bad you may not agree with it or disagree with it but i feel everyone should have the voice that they deserve to have and like i said you may not agree with it sometimes it might be malicious it might mm -hmm. be over but you just let people say what they want to say but you should be able to say how you feel back and i think nowadays social media has got to this point where people will get disrespectful when you disagree or mm -hmm. whatever it may be. And also, yeah. the main, I'll stop talking, but the main picture is I just think that these influencers and blue check people will say something and everybody runs with it, which I think you should have a mind of your own. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you're, you're preaching to the choir <laughs> on this one. I think this, um, the idea that it's, there's not enough friction in the system. Anyone, can become a blogger or you know a, a journalist or you know um and because there's no friction it can make something that's false or something that's wrong or something that misrepresents worse because then everybody else amplifies that when in fact no one has fact checked it or verified it or even questioned it didn't have time to question it and disagree um and and finally i think the issue of civility we need to do something about that. We need to bring civility back. I don't know how we do this, but it's going to take all of us. Um, and uh, so thank you um, for sharing that, Tyler. Um, I'm a big fan of Twitter as well. It's probably the one I use the most. Um, so uh, Aliyah, um, what are your favorite social media apps? For me, well, I do Twitter. I love Twitter a lot, especially since Twitter, that's fact checks a lot of things and they alert you when something may be false information. Um, I have to admit though, I'm really into TikTok right now. I won't lie to you. I'm one of those people. I be heard of it. it. Yeah, I was kidding. like, I'll never get on there. I'm like, that's for kids. I'm not doing that. And now months later, I'm like down the rabbit hole, like hour on there. But I just like TikTok because TikTok is where I feel like I've seen the most people are not putting up this front to be something other than what they are. You know, you see people on there, they're looking good, they're doing great, but people also on TikTok, I feel like are not afraid to show their lows. I've learned a lot on TikTok about 
different people, different cultures, uh, different types of disabilities. And a lot of things I feel like, like there are so many videos that I have saved. I'm just like, like, wow, I never knew that. I'm like, I never knew anybody like this ever really existed. And I also like that TikTok is, it interacts with you kind of in a way where the, the more you interact with the app, it kind of will, um, how do you say, how do I say, it kind of will alter your feed to like sending you more things that you like, which is kind of can be a little dangerous in one sense, but also in another sense, it's, it helps you find community. It helps you really get access to that representation that we're looking for. Mm. That's an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no, there is a reason why, uh, why TikTok grew so quickly during the pandemic in particular. <laughs> and I think what you're describing is the work of algorithms <laughs> to, I don't know you know, I it's collecting that. a little bit of information about what you're doing and then boom, you know. Yeah. So it's great that it's doing it well if, it, if it's feeding you things you like. So, but you bring up an interesting point about representation, meaning do you think it's because the algorithms are, are finally showing those to you or because there's more diverse people on TikTok? Probably that part. Yeah, I think, well, I do, I think that on other apps like Instagram per se, um, it can be kind of very intimidating to post something, anything that's like less than perfect than like you living your best life. I honestly can't say that I've ever seen anybody with a disability on my For You page on Instagram. Like I don't see different people. I just go down and I see all the same things, but I feel like on TikTok, the culture that everybody has created on there is a little bit more um, supportive and inviting of the type of diversity that is happening on there. So I definitely say like, it's it's probably a little bit of both, but I think that the, just the community on there is building a culture that is more accepting of these differences. Well, great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, I um, it's, it's an enjoyable experience for sure on TikTok. I do wonder how some people have People have a lot of time <laughs> to create those, but I'm grateful because they're so creative, actually, some of them. So, yeah. Um, Richard, uh, what are your so favorite spaces? Favorite? So I have everything, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I just started TikTok recently, just started it. I'm not so much deep into it because, like Leah said, I feel like it's still for kids, still, still. More, what I've what I noticed is like more high school that's what I that's what I see but I do see more more a culture of it but right now it's more like high school well that's that's what I think but um I'm also use Instagram because that's what I'm promoting like my stuff for uh, for like films and everything my uh cosplay um but there's some things like I'm in Instagram Twitter they all everything has their positive negatives Twitter you get everybody saying something, but bashing each other out, being haters, which is so sad to see, which shouldn't be happening. But um, Instagram, same thing, but you have, like Tyler was saying, you have all these people that are oblivious to these, uh, what are they called? The influencers. And we focus that one thing. It, it goes to everything. And like, I, I like, like I said, I use Instagram a lot. And what I notice, you see, people with perfect lives perfect things some of that is either sponsorships or they're married rich or, or something we don't know yeah but what I done research for is mostly they're just sponsors and it's hard for people like us to do that because I honestly fell into that category of trying to be an influencer trying to get the 1k followers trying to get 20k followers and it's you have to really promote yourself and you have to be this perfect person it's not I remember doing an, a research for a class about um for like how couples why couples think they make perfect and it's all this media this news you see sometimes this perfect couple married getting married at Disneyland or something and 
these people see that and they get the idea of they're marrying the perfect life, the perfect house, the basically the American dream. And that's what I noticed with some of these social medias that they show sometimes. And that's, it's not, it's, I'm sorry to say, but for me, it's like, it's, it's not true. It's hard. Yeah. Okay. If you're rich, cool. But it doesn't really happen because some of us too, like for me, Mexican Americans are viewed as like, and African Americans too are not make it all the way. We're, we're so, it's so sad to see that, but also the positive side with these social medias they give that culture like Aaliyah says the we see the real culture side of of people of Mexican Americans African Americans Chinese Asian Americans everybody's side culture of of that but people don't really notice it they only notice more of the fake part of it they only see what is thrown in that's shown in front of them so do you think, and it's, a, it's an interesting point, I mean, you, you're all sort of touching upon um, this next question I wanted to ask, which is, is, it, is there something actually that the social networks themselves could do, could change to, um, to, to deal with this issue of representation to, um, you know, maybe it's the algorithm and then it, it starts showing you not necessarily all the same stuff all the time. Maybe that should show you a diverse range of content and people. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Do you think they can do something to change, to help in this issue of misrepresentation or lack of representation online? That's a tough question. I, I mean... Go ahead, go ahead, Aaliyah, go ahead. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Think, well, personally, for me, like, one of the biggest problems about mis, like, about misrepresentation, lack of representation, is that when, when it's done, when other, it seems when minorities and marginalized groups are represented in media, it seems either just to say that there was somebody like there was somebody from this group to ch kind of check that box and avoid cancel culture or like their whole everything is built around this one difference whether it be they're in a wheelchair or whether it be their lgbtq plus like there it seems like their whole premise is just based around this one characteristic and i feel like that's not that's not real life like just because somebody is LGBTQ, they're still a normal person. There are still other things about them that are way more important than their sexuality and things like that. So I'd say one of the things that can be changed to genuinely foster like real representation is for these companies to really put effort forth to embody people's full humanity and not just the get caught up in these characteristics or not just ca get caught up in these stereotypes because that's what they believe you know this group is how they that's what they believe that's how they believe this group is supposed to be portrayed be portrayed sorry but yeah I just think that we need to work on genuine representation as well as like getting more representation out there because if there's more misrepresentation, then I feel like that's doing just as much harm as not having any representation at all. So you bring up a good point because I did notice after, um, you know, the beginning of the yet another surge in move movement for social justice after George Floyd's death um, leading up to this month, which is Black History Month, you, I notice in commercials, mm -hmm all of a sudden, <laughs> right. you, you, I, I'm sure you've noticed, right? You guys I, study this, right? Yeah. And I wonder after a little while or after Black History Month is over, will it just all be forgotten, right? Um, or will there be, as you call it, true authentic representation all the time rather than just when we're responding to something that's just happened in the world? That's an, that's an interesting, point, Aaliyah, um, we need to look at people more in more than one dimension. Mm -hmm. We all have many dimensions, right? 
Um, Tyler or Richard, any thoughts on, you know, if you could, if you could go talk to, um, to Jack from Twitter now, or gosh, I guess it's Mark Zuckerberg for Instagram. I was, I was, um, I was, can you beat me to it? I was going to say, <laughs> if you really want to talk about it, Zuckerberg owns all of them. He owns Facebook, yeah. Instagram, Snapchat. So that's the man you got to talk to. I mean, like any business, when people start out with their companies, you, you start out with this foundation thinking you know what it's going to be. And of course you don't, you learn, you go through failures, you go through trials and tribulations. And I don't know that man. I mean, I know we all know he went to Harvard. I'm sure we've seen the social network. We all know who he is. <laughs> He's the richest billionaire at the youngest age. He created, he created it all. He's, he's, he's got a conglomerate. Like he, he, you know, that's the, he's probably not the one running the social media platforms, but he probably has some executive or someone running it for him. Yeah. You probably want to speak to them, but I mean, he's, you could say his platforms have gotten better. He's not stagnant, but you know how it is. If you stay stagnant, you don't change in the game. There's going to be someone else to come take your spot. Look at Vine and how TikTok did. Look how MySpace and Facebook did. Like, they're going to come and take you regardless if you don't change. And it's not about you changing. It goes back to what Leah, Richard, and what you guys said. It's about you having people in position to make change. Like, that's what it is. You can have change and be like, oh, we're a diverse we're diverse, but it's like, okay, you're diverse, but who's the people at top? Like, who are the, like, I just, I'm sorry to bring this up, but I had a discussion with my other classes about the NBA, about how everyone's like, oh, the NBA is the most progressive league. They're so diverse. They have all this stuff, but it's like, okay, they are, but who are the owners? There's only one black owner and his name is Michael Jordan. And we all know who he is because he used to play in the NBA. You can't, you know, it's, you, there's no black, there's only like three or four black coaches. There's one Asian American coach on the Miami Heat, Eric Spolster, and he was just in the NBA Finals, and he's the first dude to win the NBA championship. For how many Asian American basketball players? How many Latin American basketball players there are? It's just it, that's just sports. But now, if you want to talk about politics, and I'm sorry, I wrote down the whole thing. If you want to talk about, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I just said it starts from ethnic, ethnic, culture, political, and social studies. That's what we're all taught at a young age, and if you really pay attention to those things from a young age. You should grasp a good understanding. It doesn't matter if you have mixed parents or parents of the same race. It's just about, I personally, I, I mean, you guys are going to be like, okay, Tyler, what we're talking about, I personally think it comes from like home training, but also we're in this world now where even if you are home trained, you're still influenced by your friends and these influencers and social media and stuff. But I'm sorry, going back to your original question, I think that you have to sit down with these executives and these top heads and not just me, but it has to be someone you can't just sit down with one or two black people and be like, okay, we got our representation. No, it doesn't work that way, bro. You have to sit down with a handful of people from Boston, from, from the South, from, from the Northeast, from the Pacific Northwest, from the West, from the Midwest, from, you know, you have, you, you can't just, you can't just pinpoint one group or just say, oh, we have our representation because we have three Hispanic people or we got like, you know, for Asian people, like that's what it is. Like I was just reading, I was just watching this interview with uh, Kemp Powers, who's the writer for Soul. And um, he wrote Soul and One Night in Miami, Miami with Regina King's debut, directional debut. And he was just saying like, basically Pixar had, Pixar had hit, they basically contacted him saying, we're interested in you joining us because we feel like you have a lot to give. And he was like, okay. So he joined Pixar and went in there and he joined, he basically joined into the, to the writing room, to the writer's room, like two years into the, the um, production of the making of Soul. So he was like, when he was saying, he was like, it was funny because it was like, they asked yeah. me, he was like, now you're asking for the black voice to come yeah. in after all of this time. Yeah. Like, now you want me to come in and help. But like, obviously I'm sure those people were like, you know, those, the people, I can't remember the names that he mentioned, but the people that are a, a power of top, you know, top heads, they, they said that. Of course, he was someone that was worthy and he was a big help and he's, you know, but that's just, that's just like a prime example of just like, come on, man. Like it took you that long to finally be like, okay, maybe we might need another hand here. Like it's unbelievable. That's, it's unbelievable. Well, that's, I did not realize that story. That definitely sounds like a token hire. Um, nobody wants to be a token for sure. And, um, you know, some people might argue, well, better late than never. And, you know, but I, I agree with you that we really need to think about representation, inclusion, diversity, all of it from the beginning, and then you build. You don't yeah. 
you know, I mean, it's too late. Um, and by the way, just to correct, they, um, Snap is still owned by Evan. I mean, still run by Evan Spiegel. Okay, okay. See, he I, tried I though. You're right. He tried. He tried to buy them and I know, he tried to get everything. To That's funny. Yeah, he tried it to does feel them. like that though. Yeah. He tried see, to I thought them. I thought Google owned everything, <laughs> but um, but I I think you you bring up some really good points. So thank you for bringing that up about Soul. See, I like the movie, but I know some people had mixed feelings about yeah, that movie. Yeah. Um, knew a little bit about the making of it that I didn't know. Um, so now I think differently about it, sure. Um, thank you, Tyler. Richard, any thoughts on, <laughs> if you could sit down with Jack or Mark or Evan, uh, interesting, no women in that group, but uh, <laughs> if you could sit down with one of them, what would you ask them to do to change? Jeez, I'm kind of with uh, uh, Leah with that one. Um, be more open, open more stuff for us, not just because, all our social media is connected to mostly the same thing that we look at. So if we look at certain stuff in our Instagram, it's going to go to that. We don't get to see other cultures directly from the, the search feed. I know from Instagram, Twitter, probably the same thing. Um, but I would ask, like, be let it open for everyone, not just have us look at one thing on our on our uh, on our on our social media. And I agree with Tyler, like with this we we can talk to them but it's the business it's unearned benefits with those guys mm. um yeah. we, there's nothing all i can say like i said is just ask them hey is there any way just open it up don't let us just select one thing or see one thing or see like an instagram influencer wearing adidas or nike and then we look at that like oh cool shopping no it's like open it for everyone lgbtq uh indigenous people everybody that we can look at not just one thing or two things that we look over and over because i know my grand we were talking about bitcoin and some other things and my grandma's facebook feed put puts up bitcoin and some other things for it's like is there anything else besides that can you just put on <laughs> but that's what i want to want them to change and tell them or ask ask yeah. tell have college students run the run the feeds or have them intern and they can help you out and show you what people need to see. Well, now that's something they could do today. There's nothing stopping them from doing that, right? Um, so I hope Mark, Evan, uh, Jack, I don't know you personally, but if you're listening, <laughs> listen to that. That's a really easy idea. It costs you nothing to do. Give it a try. Um, you know, I think I want to turn to, we have some questions coming in through the Q&A. Thank you. I encourage everybody who's listening. If you're watching on Facebook, please go ahead and put questions in the comments there and our team will filter, filter that over to us. If you're watching on Zoom, please go ahead and submit your questions through the Q&A. Um, we do have a question here about, um, do you think there's a filter bubble in effect on social media and that the because of the algorithms, that's kind of at the end of the day, feeding the biases we see, the stereotypes that we see. Um, do you think that that is part of what is happening? Why does social media perpetuate um, some of these stereotypes? or misrepresentations? Aaliyah? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I definitely do think that there are filter bubbles, especially maybe um, depending on the algorithm, algorithm more apps than some, but um, I definitely believe that's how people get so entrenched in their beliefs just because they're constantly seeing like the same thing. And the algorithm is constantly showing you like what you wanna see, of course, more things to support that argument, more things that are in relation to the thing that you've been liking, the thing that they've been seeing you interact with, of course. So I think that's, I think that goes back to what Richard said that it, if anything, they need to open up the algorithm to let you see more things because just just seeing one side can lead you to so much if misinformation. And regardless to even if your side is the right side, I think one of the things that we're missing on social media, kind of like what you, Lynette, were saying about civility is listening to both sides. And I believe that the filter bubble prevents that because 
you're only seeing one side. And I believe that's why we have such a strong like cancel culture because you're only seeing one side, you're getting so entrenched in your belief, you're connecting with people who only believe what you believe too. And it's just like, I'm standing firm in this belief. I've been affirmed by my social media and things like that. But it maybe if the algorithms loosened up and we could interact with more things rather than just being stuck in this one bubble, we could actually get somewhere as far as like conversing, as far as communicating with one another, as far as like, as an audience telling these people at the top, showing them what we would like to see in our media. So yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I, I think it's, it's interesting because this next question kind of touches on what you were just saying, Aaliyah, and um, also something uh, that we, that I had asked you in, in advance, and that is, you know, is there something that each of us can do? Because, you know, these bubbles, what's fed to us is partly because of how we're behaving, right, on the social network, and it's partly because of how the social network is built. Um, so this question uh, here says, um, that companies are designed to make money and a lot of the content is protected by First Amendment speech and so on. So what can we as users do? Um, uh, let's see here. What's left is the user and educating them to use media legally and ethically and responsibly. So how can we do that? How can we, I mean, what can we do given that the whole thing is driven by money? We don't pay with money. We're paying with a lot of other things like privacy. Um, is there something I could do today to support this issue of representation and misrepresentation? I f for me, uh, I feel like, I'm sorry, Tyler, like, go, no, no, go, 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 go. Okay, go. for me, we can, as people that post on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, we, we can do that, but it goes back to what side will do it, what side wouldn't, because you got people, like I said before, you got people that are influencers making money, and they're not going to want to help because they're getting all all these sponsorships and everything, and yet others will try to do it, make a difference, but you see one side go one, another side go the other way, and this darn algorithm doesn't really hit. All we can do is share and try to show others. But at the same time, people forget what they're sharing. Like the challenge that we see on Instagram, like that, I forgot which one I was, I was looking at. I had to do a challenge for the Amazon or the women in Amazon or Islam. I forgot what it was. It, was, it had to do with the selfie challenge or something. And I took a little, a little questionnaire. Like, do you really know why people are doing this challenge? Most 80% did not know why they were doing the challenge. It's because of the people that are that are um, just doing it because to be famous or something. And so that goes to show too the model the model minority of how sometimes it can be represented as a good thing, but it's still somehow twisted to bad. And it's 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 hard that we we can try to do it by posting and show others. And talking to the head people, but at the same time, for me, it, it, it's that little blindside moment where you really, it's hard. It can't. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I think, but, but you bring up something interesting. It could be an action we could take is to elevate. Um, like I, there used to be on, on Twitter, I don't see it as much anymore. These follow Fridays where everyone would say, hey, this is somebody I really like and you all should follow this person for these reasons, right? But we could do that today. We can say, this is someone you should follow because you know, they support representation. They support you know, causes you care about, whatever it is. Um, and it's, by the way, one way that civility can come back is when we lift each other up on platforms like social media. Um, I don't know why we don't do that anymore. <laughs> we should. I'm starting to do it with, a, with an individual in, in California so she and I have started to go back and forth saying, follow this, follow this person. Maybe we could all do that too today. Um, <laughs> Tyler, did you have 
thoughts too? And um, uh, they pretty much they pretty much they were on point with everything I, uh, that I would have said. So I would okay. just stand by what they said. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have a, we have another. We'll take one more question here. I mean, we have a couple questions here, and and um, I, I want to get to them because they're they're pretty good. Um, that do you think media representation will help solve entrenched social and civil rights issues? Or do you think it's the other way around? Do we have to solve social and civil rights issues first and then the media will reflect that? Or should we try and tackle the media to help solve some of the social and civil rights issues? Ooh, that's a tough one. Well, but you I'm, have thoughts, I know you do. I, I believe it goes hand in hand, in my opinion. But I, I do think that you have to be, you have to be, you know, up front and forward with it, even if it's not, you know, tackling the media, you still have you still have to show your presence and and you know protest. And I, I I'm a firm believer in those type of steps. But I think it goes hand in hand. I think honestly that you have to you have to step in the room with the media platform. You know, people that own this this huge industry that it is. You have to step in the room and speak to them because they control a lot of minds. And like, I know you, you go back to like social media as a whole, but it goes back to the mind. Like it's almost like it's a huge, like just reiterating with Aaliyah and Richards in the beginning, it's 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 a reiteration of, of what you try to try to teach yourself or what you believe in. It's it's telling you, you know, you, you it's your, your first thing is mimic, you know, your parents, like that's the first, thing you do is mimic what you see and then you see the television and you know the shows you watch and the people you hang out with so I think absolutely I think you have to sit down with these people and let them know hey times are changing there's more than just men and women in the world like there's other things going on you know it's 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 things things are are rapidly you know there it's a different world it's not the same as it was even five years ago you know like or two years yeah. ago and and I think that a lot of people that are on top, like I said, are born in 1950 or 19, no disrespect to, to anyone or anything, but. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. But, <laughs> but uh, a lot of these people, you know, my dad might have something to say to me about that, but yeah, it's just, it's just the honest truth, man. It's just, it's just the honest truth because like Rich, like a perfect point Richard said that you commend him on was that, you just got to get younger people in that know what's going on yeah. in the world that have the, 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 the voice, you know, so. Uh, you know what, that, and that's a perfect, perfect way to, to kind of um, bring us to, to our closing today. I could talk to the three of you forever. Um, I really hope that we can have you back at some point again down the road. Um, we'd love to have you back. Um, a couple of things as we wrap, there were, there were lots of other questions too. And I, I feel that what I'd like to propose is that we take some of these questions that have come in that we weren't able to get to. I would love to work with you on a blog post or a written position on these questions and publish that for our audience because they are absolutely worthy of our time of which we've run out. Um, but on your note about letting more young people in, let me tell you something. It is us who got us in the trouble and the mess we're in and no pressure, but we have a lot of hope riding on you and your and the young people in the world to change it. Um, I think on that note, um, thank you so much to everybody for listening today. I, I just want to quickly call attention. There is one thing everyone can do next week. There's one thing that everybody can do next week, and that is to consider um, participating in Media Done Responsibly's Film Festival which is being hosted um, by them. Uh, I believe it's starting March 3rd, is that right? March 3rd, I'm just gonna share my screen here real quick. And um, this is an opportunity for um, filmmakers of mostly people who are underrepresented in the movie industry to showcase their work, to um, be connected to industry representatives, I believe, which I think is a great cause a great use of, of time. And, um, and then do, you know, I think for people who want to do internships as well in the movie industry, we'll be able to, um, to have access to some of those, those industry representatives. So I think Aliyah, you'll be, you, I think you're involved in the event. Is that right? 
Yes, yes, I yeah. am. Doing yeah. very yeah. cool things. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, and so uh, with that, I think just one final thing as we close out here, if I can get to this next slide. Um, I'm having some issues with the share, but I encourage everybody when you leave today that you fill out the, um, the survey that will pop up for you. Give us some feedback about how you felt about today and um, join us next week. We're oh, sorry, not next week, March 10th is our next session. We'll be talking TikTok with Diana Graber of CyberWise. Um, specifically about some of the interesting challenges that people have been um, doing. Aaliyah, you might have seen some of those challenges <laughs> on TikTok and why, what we need to be aware of as parents in particular, especially for our younger kids who might be interested in participating in some of those challenges. Um, so with that, I, again, thanks everybody for listening. Um, thank you so much, Tyler, Aaliyah, Richard, it, it was great to have you, um, a perspective we don't often get on this webinar series. We need to listen to the young people more than we are. And on the issue of representation, I think it will take each of us, um, our own roles to educate ourselves, to think outside the box, to be open about understanding others who are not like you to maybe question what's being fed to you in your social media feed. Um, and one last thing I wanna plug because there was a question on this. We are huge proponents of media literacy education. We believe it should be required education in schools from as young an age as possible because in doing so, we are going to help everyone not necessarily be so um, gullible around bias, around misrepresentation, around misinformation, even around you know things that and people that aren't really who you think that they are online. And I think with that, we'll sign off. Thank you everybody for joining today. And we will see you on the 10th. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>